A student online sent me this video for me to be able to identify the transformations. So what I wanna do in this video is to help you as well as help them with their problem. So let's go ahead and write out the problem on this board so therefore I can kind of work through it. All right, so if I was approaching this problem and helping the student, they're sitting right next to me, a couple things I would recognize are a couple things I would work out with them. First, we need to understand when we're trying to identify the transformations, we want a quadratic to be in the form y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. That is going to be our vertex form, where a, remember, is going to be our stretch as well as our compression, vertical stretch and compression. Also, a is going to reflect about the x-axis. h is going to be your horizontal shift left and right and k is going to be your vertical shift up and down. The problem that we have in this equation is this is in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we need to do in this problem, before we can identify the transformations, we need to go from this form all the way over to that form. And the process of doing that is called completing the square. Now, to go about completing the square, there's a couple things we need to kind of look at first or kind of have like a little checklist. The first thing is we cannot have a coefficient of our quadratic term. So what we need to do is we need to be able to get that term away from the x squared. Now, the way to do that is gonna be a little confusing in this problem because a lot of times students don't think to apply this process, but I don't want to kind of do it a different way. I wanna be able to approach everything. We're keeping the y on the left-hand side and we're just gonna only work here on this right-hand side. So to get this negative two outside of it, what I simply need to do is I need to factor out a negative two from the negative two x squared as well as from the five x. And that's even more confusing because I know I can factor a negative two from here, but how do I factor out a negative two from the five? Well, here's the kind of important things. If you have a five and let's say you factor out a negative two, well, then all you need to simply do is rewrite a negative five divided by negative two. And you can see that this still equals a five. So when I'm factoring out a negative two, think about that as like dividing out the negative two. And since negative two doesn't evenly divide into five, my resulting answer is gonna be five over negative two. So the answer or the expression is gonna look like this. All right, so now what I've done is I have now taken out this factor out this negative two. So now inside this parentheses, I have an x squared minus a five halves x. Now I have something I can work with for completing the square. Because again, the idea of completing the square is I need to go from standard form where I have this x squared all the way over to now where I have a quantity x minus h squared. So what we need to do is we need to create what we call a perfect square trinomials. Because perfect square trinomials can be factored down into binomial squared. If you remember like a common one, like x squared plus two x plus one. This is called a perfect square trinomial. This can be factored down into x plus one times an x plus one, which can be simplified into an x plus one quantity squared. That is what we need to create. Unfortunately, <laughs> this has a, a middle term of two. This has a middle term of negative five halves. So it's gonna be a little bit more confusing to be able to create this value C or is going to create the perfect square trinomial. But thankfully for us, there is a formula for us to be able to identify C. C is equal to B divided by two, quantity squared. So what I'm simply gonna do is take the negative five halves, and you could even do positive because it doesn't matter, you're gonna square it. Negative five, five halves divided by two, quantity squared. Well remember guys, divided by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. So when I multiply by one half on the top and the bottom, that's gonna go to one. I'm gonna be left with a negative five over four, quantity squared, which is going to give me a 25 over 16. Now this value is what we're gonna plug inside this parenthesis. So y equals a negative two times x squared minus five halves x plus a 25 over 16. But here's the little issue. We can't just randomly add a 25 over 16 onto the right side of the equation, right? Remember, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. But at the beginning of the video, I told you, I don't wanna do anything on this left-hand side. I wanna keep all my work on the right-hand side. So to keep this equation still equal, if I add a 25 over 16, then I'm gonna to have to subtract a 25 over 16, right? As long as you add and subtract the same value on the same side of the equation, you're still keeping the equation equivalent. But here's the thing, I actually didn't add a 25 over 16 because remember, the this is inside the parentheses, that's being multiplied by a negative two. That means everything inside here is being multiplied by a negative two. So what I actually added was a 25 over 16 times a negative two. So when I subtract a 25 over 16, I also need to multiply that by a negative two. Now what I simply need, I'm going to look into doing is I need to create this binomial squared, all right? So how do we go about factoring this to a binomial squared? This was not a problem, a difficult problem to go and factor, right? X squared plus two X plus one, what two numbers, multiply to give you one, add to give you two, 
x plus one times x plus one, x plus one squared. But what do you do when you have something like fractions? Well, thankfully, there's actually another easy way for us to be able to do this. All we simply need to look into is our b divided by two once it's simplified. So our b divided by two is going to be our value that's gonna give it, that's going to be in our binomial squared. If your middle term is negative, that means your binomial is gonna be negative. So therefore I have a x minus a five fourths quantity squared. And then over here, I just need to go ahead and simplify this. Well, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive, And this is gonna reduce to a one over eight. So therefore now I'll have a positive 25 over eight. <sighs> okay, so now we've gone from standard form all the way to vertex form. Now we just need to go ahead and write out our transformations. But for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna write them out, but I will verbally say them. We're gonna have a reflection about the x-axis. So instead of the graph opening up, it's gonna be opening down. Since my a is larger than one, two is larger than one, I'm gonna have a vertical stretch as a factor of two. It's x minus five fourths. Remember the formula guys is x minus h. That means h is equal to a five fourths, right? It's x minus five fourths. So h equal to five fourths, that means I'm gonna shift the graphs five fourths over to the right, and my k is going to be a positive 25 over eight. So for k, that means I'm going to shift the graph up 25 over eight units which looks like it's going to be three times eight, so three and one eight would roughly be there. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the process for finding the uh, transformations. I hope that helped the student, and I hope it's gonna help you.